Item number, SCP-828. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-828-1 is to be housed in the Site-641 Marine Mammal Rehabilitation Center, located 10 kilometers inland from the coastline of Somerset Island in the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. It is to be kept in regular contact with site personnel and interviewed regularly by the on-site psychologist. To facilitate this, SCP-828-1 has been granted limited mobility. It is to be surveilled via a GPS-enabled ankle monitoring system. If SCP-828-1 approaches within 5 kilometers of the ocean, it is to be intercepted by on-site security personnel and returned to containment. Following review by the site director, SCP-828-1 may be placed in restrictive housing. SCP-828-1 is not to come in contact with any prepubescent human subjects. If this occurs, SCP-828-1 will be mandatorily placed in restrictive housing, and an independent investigation of Foundation personnel will follow. SCP-828-1 is to be fed with fish, or small whales, native to the region. Only while in a controlled, experimental environment may SCP-828-1 come in contact with SCP-828-2. SCP-828-2 is contained in the Site-641 Reliquary, located at the Cunningham Inlet Facility. It is to be inspected bi-weekly for deterioration. A textile restoration technician is to inspect SCP-828-2 bi-monthly for degradation. Repairs will be conducted with the assistance of the on-site, classically trained Inuit Shaman. Description SCP-828-1 is a humanoid organism that stands 1.4 meters tall, with white pupilless eyes and long hair, composed of kelp-like unbranched stripes of Valeria escalenta, or bladderlock kelp. The subject's skin resembles that of fish, of the Myoxophallus, or Sculpin genus. SCP-828-1 is amphibious but cannot remain out of water for more than 10 minutes without suffering from dehydration. The subject's hands and feet are webbed to facilitate swimming. Medical examination of the hair has revealed that it is permeated by extensive vasculature, indicating that the organ is used for gas exchange. The subject's body appears emaciated, but the subject has yet to request food. If offered food, SCP-828-1 will consume it, quote, to be polite, end quote. But it is unclear if the subject requires regular feeding. The subject was found with severe tooth decay and has been provided with dentures and dental care after containment. When out of water, the subject's skin emits an odor that has been unanimously described as pleasant by all prepubescent human subjects. Importantly, children have described the scent as comforting and maternal during interviews. Analysis of the subject's skin secretions has revealed the presence of a volatile organic substance, which may act as a pheromone. It is hypothesized that this compound may aid the subject in its efforts to befriend children. Research into the mechanism of action is ongoing. SCP-828-1 has been extraordinarily cooperative with Foundation personnel during containment. Psychological analysis reveals that SCP-828-1 exhibits symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, including intrusive recurrent recall, insomnia, and hypervigilance. Paradoxically, these symptoms are exacerbated by exposure to the sea, images of the sea, marine mammals, and images of marine mammals. SCP-828-1 also exhibits signs of traumatic bonding to the Foundation and individuals associated with the Foundation. It is the recommendation of the psychological staff that this bond be exploited for the purpose of containment and study. SCP-828-2 is a heavily water-damaged Amauti 
which is a traditional Inuit child-carrying parka that SCP-8281 was wearing prior to containment. The garment is made of materials traditionally associated with Inuit clothing, seal fur, caribou hide, and thick woolen duffel. When SCP-8281 places a child into the carrying pouch of the garment, the child is unaffected by cold temperatures or hyperbaric ambient pressure and does not need to breathe. The child remains conscious and aware while contained in SCP-8282. Recovery SCP-828 was recovered from Pangnir Tung, Canada when a missing child, Nathan Kapik, thought to have been lost in a sudden storm, was discovered by fishermen on the abandoned isle of Iglunga. The following interview was conducted by local representatives of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Interviewed Nathan Kapik Interviewer Corporal Filigree Foreword The following interview was conducted after child's recovery. It has been translated from Inuktitut. Original transcript available on request. Begin log. Filigree. All right, little man. Why don't you tell me how you managed to get out on that island? Capic. Am I in trouble? Filigree. What? Of course not. Everybody in town was very worried about you. We're just happy to have you back, but we still need to know how you got out there. Okay? Capic. Okay. Well... I was playing on the rocks outside of town. I knew I shouldn't, but the rocks are fun. Sometimes if you sit still, you can see whales. I like whales, and I wanted to see them. Anyway, I saw something swimming in the water. I couldn't see, though, and I wanted to get close, so I could. But the rocks are slippery sometimes, and I fell. Hesitation. Filigree. It's okay. You can keep going. Capic. Well, it was high tide. If it wasn't high tide, I would have fallen in the mud. A big wave caught me, and I bumped my head. I don't remember what happened right after. Filigree. That's okay. You can tell us what you do remember. Capic. Promise you won't think I'm lying? Filigree. Sure. Capic. Well, I woke up, and I was underwater. I could see the sun coming through the waves. It wasn't cold, though, or wet. I felt warm, like I was wrapped in a fur blanket. Oh, and I saw a whale. Filigree. Uh... Capic. Excitedly. And then I felt a wave, like I was riding a wave into shore. And then I came out of the water on the island where the old buildings are. It was like surfing, only underwater. I bet whales feel like that all the time. Anyway, my friend. Filigree. Your friend. Capic. My fish friend. I was scared at first because she looked weird, but she's nice. She's the one who caught me when I fell, or at least she said she did, but I don't remember because I hit my head. But she took me out of her amounty, and I was dry, and she told me where to find stuff for fire and brought me meat that she helped me cook. I stayed on a pier in a fisher shack. It was our secret place. Filigree. Did your friend have a name? Capic. She said Pichuk. Translation is not. But that didn't make any sense. Anyway, can I see her? She seemed sad and lonely. I don't think she has any friends. Nobody should live like that. Filigree. Did she hurt you, or do anything strange? Did she say where she was from? Capic. No. She was really nice and was real good at fishing. I think it's because she can swim really well, and she doesn't need a boat. She never said where she was from, so I thought she was from the island. But can I see her? End log. Closing statement. The interview continues in this vein for some time. Throughout, Capic insists that SCP-8281 did not harm him and was friendly. The story was not released to the public. Local authorities believe that the child had experienced hypothermia-induced hallucinations 
while on the island. In the weeks following the recovery of the missing child, rumors began to spread throughout the town of a strange marine animal in and around the harbor. Repeat sightings of a strange person on the docks prompted widespread speculation and hearsay. Terriac Le Chatelier, Site 641's on-site shaman, heard the rumors through family contacts and decided to investigate on a hunch with a small team from MTF 89E, Thomas's Tuggers. SCP-828 eluded capture for several weeks, until captured during an attempt to enter the Capic family residence. SCP-828 was then brought back to Site-641 for processing. Interviewed SCP-828 Interviewer Terriac Le Chatelier Foreword this unofficial interview was conducted en route to Site 641, on board the recently acquired fishing vessel Jean. SCP-828 was sequestered in the live catch hold at the time of interview. Le Chatelier insisted on the encounter before processing, saying, The sea is already pretty angry about this. I don't know if we'll make it back. Please note that the following interview was translated from Inuktitut. Begin log. Le Chatelier. Hello down there. SCP-828. Anga Cook. Translation. Shaman. Are you here to consume my flesh and make my power yours? Do you speak for the mother of the sea come to collect her due? Am I to serve you? To offer my bones as your tupelak? Tell me so that I may know, and we may be without pretense. Le Chatelier. What? No. I just wanted to talk to you in case your mother decided to cut things short. I want to know why you didn't take the child. SCP-828. This is a trick. Le Chatelier. No, I'm being serious. I work for people who want to meet things like you. SCP-828. So you serve another master, then. What do they want with me? Le Chatelier. Mostly to stare at you and ask you questions. Are you comfortable down there? SCP-828. SCP-828 stares at Le Chatelier incredulously. I will speak with your masters, Anga Cook. Le Chatelier. Just thought I'd ask. End log. Closing statement, SCP-828 remained unresponsive for the remainder of the voyage. Interviewed, SCP-828. Interviewers, Agent Scout Fullbrush and Terriac Le Chatelier. Foreword, the following interview took place after several weeks of processing. SCP-828 had displayed signs of agitation and an intervention was undertaken at the request of Le Chatelier. Begin log. Full brush and Le Chatelier enter the interview booth. SCP-828 is restrained to a chair on the other side. Full brush. Good afternoon, SCP-828. We understand that you've been having trouble. SCP-828. What is SCP-828? Full brush. That is the designation we've assigned you. SCP-828. A name. Full brush. A designation. Le Chatelier. You can think of it as a name if it's easier for you. SCP-828. I see. Full brush. Regardless. The maintenance and research staff have reported that you have been increasingly agitated and resistant. We are here to find out why. SCP-828 indicates full brush. Is that your master, Anga Cook? Does this Kalunat hold your leash? Full brush. Excuse me. Le Chatelier. The only leash full brush here holds is his. Full brush. What my associate means to say is that we work for the same organization 
but I am not directly responsible for him. Everybody you see here works for the same group of people. We want to learn about you. SCP-828. That's what he said. Le Chatelier. I wasn't going to lie to you. You know how much those cost anyway. Too steep to lie to you. SCP-828. I... I don't know what to say. When you caught me, I thought... Trails off. Full brush. You thought we'd dissect you, or kill you, or enslave you? Reasonable assumptions, but not what we do. We just want to keep you safe with us, and learn from you. SCP-828. SCP-828 remains silent, looking thoughtful. Le Chatelier. Yeah, we'll keep you safe. You'll have a home. SCP-828. I wouldn't have to... Hesitation. I wouldn't have to seek children anymore. Le Chatelier. No. You're free to keep to yourself if you like. You probably won't see anybody unless somebody really wants to talk to you or something. Don't ask me why they'd want to. That's just their way. SCP-828. What if... Hesitation. Full brush. What if what? SCP-828. What if I want to talk to people? What if I need to? Full brush. Well, typically we only keep things like you as restrained as they need to be. There are incentives for good behavior. Cooperation. SCP-828. What does it mean for me to cooperate? What do you want? Le Chatelier. You want to kick this up the chain, Brushy? Full brush. If you want to cooperate, I will speak with my superiors, and we can arrange something. End log. Interviewed. SCP-828. Interviewers. Dr. Isaac Rosenthal and Terriac Le Chatelier. Forward. The following interview was conducted in full cooperation with SCP-828, following negotiations with site administration. Dr. Isaac Rosenthal has been tasked with establishing biographical and anomalous details regarding SCP-828. Begin log. Rosenthal. All right then, 828. Why don't we start with some history? Tell me about yourself. SCP-828. Where do you want me to start? Rosenthal. The beginning? Whatever part of your life you'd consider to be a beginning. SCP-828. My memory is more torn than my Amauti, Umilik. She ripped holes in it when I was taken. I only remember what she wants me to. Le Chatelier. Playing the pronoun game, eh? SCP-828. Some memories stay. I lived on Kikikik Taluk. Translation, Baffin Island, in a village where the water was dark and cold, and the bay narrow. We were hidden then. The invaders from the west had not come so far. The invaders from the east were yet to arrive. I had a family then. I was a mother. Trails off. Rosenthal, what do you remember about your family? SCP-828. My husband. Hesitates. My husband was gone, I think. He died. A bear broke his neck on the ice. A sudden wave washed him into the sea. His jealous brother killed him. He was lost in a blizzard. Or one of the invaders shot him with their bows. It doesn't matter. My son and I were left behind. I was inherited by my husband's brother. I remember him struggling to catch enough for all of us. He was not a strong man. He would skulk to the sweat hut to commune with the shaman. We were, as a family, a burden to our people. Burdens do not last long on the ice. Rosenthal, how does this fit into your current state? Le Chatelier. She's setting the scene, just let her keep going. 
SCP-828 My son was old enough to watch the men, but not old enough to know better. He'd seen them hunting. Learned how. Watched them hide downwind of the Palinia. Learned to sneak up. The boy was clever, you see. Always carving the smallest figures into ivory and stone. He killed a seal. Came back home with the dogs, smiling. Waving his slate knife in the wind. I smiled then. He went out again and again. Until one day, the dogs came back without him. I went out looking, found the hole in the ice. I knelt down and looked. I saw green ice, heard a voice, hesitation. Rosenthal, did it say anything? The voice, SCP-828. This I remember because it wanted me to remember. It, the voice. It said that my son had disrespected her children, that he had neglected the customary offerings. Respect. Le Chatelier. The kid probably forgot to offer the seals a drink before they died. SCP-828. I offered myself. If my son was payment, then it could accept a larger price, yes? I watched the Palinia. There was no sea, just green ice. It coughed him up like a sick dog next to me. I held him until his eyes opened, said goodbye, and stood on the green ice in the hole. I remember going deep. I remember unearthly singing and a boiling hot presence, like I was inside a womb of flame. There's not much left after that. Rosenthal, what else do you remember? SCP-828 Children. I remember children looking down at me through a hole in the sky. I take them into my arms when they fall. I bring a place where fire burns underwater, where they do not fall, where they cannot fall. Le Chatelier. I thought you said you couldn't remember. SCP-828. I'm giving you the stories I do remember. There were always children. They didn't always look the same. Many looked much like you, indicates at Le Chatelier, as your people grew. Your people were the only ones I saw, for a time. The only ones I saw. Trails off, saddened. Rosenthal, I think that's enough for today. We'll resume at our next scheduled appointment. End Log Lesson Complete If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-827, The Soup, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.